Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook. American Comics. Make up containment. I create a foundation. Chapter 51. Foundation Paradise Island Base, Restaurant A. Chen Feng yawned, picking out breakfast in the dining room with a plate in his hand a little tiredly. The discussion on the details of the project last night was too tortuous. He still suffers from being young and inexperienced. In the end, Chen Feng always feels like he has lost more than a billion yuan. Commander, here are your lamb chops, which are cooked by the back kitchen after the carefully selected Daolong lamb has just been slaughtered. Chen Feng looked at the other thing on the dinner plate in doubt, and asked in confusion, what is this? A well-cooked lamb lance and egg, and tender roasted lamb liver, and a glass of gin. The chef gave Chen Feng a look that any man could understand, and whispered mysteriously, I also added a sauce made from fugu white seeds according to the secret recipe, which is very effective in boosting energy. There are rumors in Colonel Han's hometown that this gin can have double the effect. Chen Feng coughed twice, it's just a normal cooperation negotiation, what are you thinking about? Ha 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 ha, definitely, what I'm talking about is business negotiation, I wish you a pleasant meal sir. The officers and soldiers of the special task force who watched Chen Feng's embarrassment in the restaurant watched this scene cheerfully. Colonel Hans, the rigid old Prussian funk, was still holding a glass of wine, and took the lead in booing, to Commander. Respect Commander. Ah, it seems that the loss of more than 1 billion yuan in business is very conspicuous. Everyone can see it. He smiled and raised his glass, to mobile task force. Putting down his glass and sitting back on his seat, it can be seen that these people in the base actually respect and love Commander Chen Feng very much. The commander who is willing to dine with officers and soldiers in the restaurant, and even waits in line honestly, and I go first when there is something to do, is always more respected than the commander who makes a small fuss when there is nothing to do. Otherwise, if the prosperous times are domineering, the troubled times will be prosperous, and the spirit of the foundation will be completely lost, it will be absolutely useless. Having said that, the body that has been strengthened by the customized version of the T-virus can still compete with the limit of normal human physique. Sure enough, there is still a need to explore the path of genetic strengthening. Chen Feng thought so, forked a piece of lamb chops and chewed it in his mouth. It was really tender, juicy and extremely delicious. Is it because of the basey sauce? The advantage of the A-level base is that even if the chef of the restaurant is thrown to the outside world, it is still at the level of a top restaurant chef. After all, when dealing with contained objects, task force members are very prone to psychological problems, so the logistics of the foundation base are top-notch. This time, Chen Feng finally realized how terrifying a woman whose body was already super extraordinary was, so improving her own strength had to be put on the agenda as soon as possible. After breakfast, take a gulp of gin. Coming to the training room, Chen Feng already had a full understanding of the psychic commander. The career direction of psychic commander can be known just by looking at the name. Although he also has a strong combat ability, he still prefers the command system. The concept of the supreme psychic commander came from the world of extreme panic. In order to deal with the new situation of war, the federal government of the world authorized a military enterprise named Amazon Technology Company to study this project. For this project, Amakion even established a city, selected tens of thousands of children with spiritual potential from the entire federation to enter the company's facilities, and finally selected less than a few hundred children with this potential. It's training to become a soldier. But in the end, the experimental subject who was really qualified to become a psychic commander ran away, and caused a series of terrible disasters. It can be said that Amakion, that is, the ATC company spent such a large price, but only produced one defective product. The psychic commander of the foundation is a perfect body produced according to the research of this concept. A psychic commander must be a psychic with strong spiritual power traits, who can communicate with his troops through psychic power, instantly perceive the entire battlefield situation, and command the troops to victory. Every psychic commander can perceive and control the battlefield situation, and can add various strengthenings to troops through psionic spells, such as spiritual inspiration, spiritual comfort, calm wind, stasis shield, etc. Not only can it provide a great increase in strategy, but its individual also has a great combat ability. 
It can directly use soul fire attacks on the enemy, or perform soul stealing, and psionic splitting releases debuff. When the psychic commander is strong to a certain level, he can also perform terrifying strategic level killing techniques such as psychic domination, void spear, void crack, etc. on the enemy. Since the psychic commander can reach the foundation's D-level evaluation even if he is just getting started, the D-level stage already belongs to extraordinary creatures. D-level life forms, not only their vitality, but also their spiritual power, have already undergone metamorphosis. Without any weapons, one person can contend against a company-level modern mechanized force. If converted to ancient times, it would be one enemy against 10,000. Chen Feng's spiritual power is far stronger than ordinary people's due to the rewards he received for containing 939 before, and after so many days of adaptation, his mental power is already very strong. Reach the threshold of Psyker. System, use the Psychic Commander Training Manual. When Chen Feng used the Psychic Commander Training Manual, he immediately noticed that his life level was blessed with a great force in an instant. Powerful life energy was injected into his body, constantly metamorphosis his muscles, bones and internal organs, and spiritual energy was strengthening his brain. Numerous training techniques and memories of the psychic commander flooded his brain. When Chen Feng opened his eyes again, a golden amber light emerged from the depths of his pupils. The mortal body has broken the limits of the human body at this moment and achieved extraordinary achievements. Chen Feng looked at the target on the foundation's training ground, a light blue flame burst out in his hand, and hit the target as quickly as a bullet. The flame directly ignored the armor on the target and burned. A heavy armor unit simulated by the computer was instantly burned by the soul fire, and the heavy armor was intact in the system's judgment. Looking at this scene, Chen Feng couldn't help being shocked. Too strong, worthy of being an S-level occupation judged by the system. I am just getting started, and one of the most common skills can kill a computer-generated D-level heavy armor unit target. That is a tyrant-level existence. Psychic commanders are undoubtedly very powerful, but in order to exert their maximum combat ability, they need to create matching troops. If there is no matching army to use, the psychic commander's strategic ability will be greatly weakened. The psychic commander is a bit like the hero unit in Heroes of Might and Magic. Although it is not without individual combat power, its various abilities still need to lead the corresponding legion to play out. This is both the flaw and the strength of Psychic Commander. According to the knowledge in the Psychic Commander's training manual, Chen Feng learned that ordinary soldiers are not suitable for the psionic command method of the Psychic Commander. For example, in the world of Red Alert that everyone is familiar with, there is a country called Yuri Empire that is good at using Psychic Super Ability. The units in the Yuri Empire camp, even the most basic infantry or super ability recruits who can shoot fire bombs. It's not that he can't command normal mortal troops, but the problem is that mortal minds simply cannot establish a spiritual link for a long time. Without the establishment of a mind link, Chen Feng would not be able to activate the perception ability on a legion scale. It would be fine for one or two short-term battles, but if he used a mind link against ordinary mortal troops for a long time, he would have to recuperate for at least a few months after the battle. So psychic commanders either use cloned soldiers who have erased all emotional minds, or genetically evolved fighters, or high-level soldiers like psionic soldiers. Or they use the mechanical ascension system, such as the artificial humanoids of the Yoroha army, tactical humanoids, or ship girls. Fortunately, after using the psychic commander training manual, Chen Feng got a blueprint for the building. Psychic Warrior Academy, after building this building, Chen Feng can select qualified people with psychic potential through the Psychic Warrior Academy to enter it for training. But looking at the cost, with 50,000 rumors, 3,000 basic psychic recruits can be trained every 3 months. Seeing that he could barely pass the 10W rumor rate, Chen Feng gritted his teeth and decided to build it. For the rest of the rumors, Chen Feng did not directly purchase support from the foundation, but instead spent some cost-effective technological materials. For example, the production materials of puppet-type clone soldiers, the sample data of T-series virus products in biochemical world, the production authorization of MTFI combat exoskeleton, the production authorization of OWLI intelligent drone, etc. Rather than directly purchasing all kinds of support from the system, 
it is better to directly purchase authorization in one step. The current two MTFs are enough, plus there are Krieger Corps military posts. A Krieger Corps of 10,000 people can be summoned every month, and now Chen Feng no longer needs to waste rumor points to directly buy reinforcements from the foundation. Ordinary conventional troops, Chen Feng is enough, and what he needs next is to build various high-end combat power, at least he must first prepare the cloned puppet soldiers dedicated to his spiritual commander. Psionic troops will be one of the development directions of the Foundation's high-end combat power in the future. All psychic recruits under Chen Feng's command will receive various promotions after a certain battle, and then he will assign some elite psychic soldiers to the regular mobile task force, thereby improving the overall strength of the Foundation. Combat effectiveness, forming a virtuous circle. After finalizing the direction, Chen Feng immediately recruited Miss 2B, who was his adjutant and part-time security officer. I'm going to expand the Foundation base, and soon the Foundation headquarters will send engineers and personnel to the base. Among them, I will build a Psychic Warrior Academy to train psychic soldiers, pass it on, and tell the MTF Mobile Task Force that anyone who is interested and qualified can enter the school for training. Follow Commander. Looking at Miss 2B who was going to convey the order, Chen Feng couldn't help but think of Queen Shifeng, who is also an artificial intelligence, now that everything has been taken care of. Taking advantage of your free time, you must experience the fun of men. Aren't guns, machinery, tanks, airplanes, warships, and mechs all fun for men? After being promoted to the spiritual commander, Chen Feng's body has surpassed the strength of ordinary people, and he can already use some unconventional weapons and equipment. For example, the FFR-41MR electronic fighter Snow Wind, this fighter has too strong maneuverability, and in order to protect the driver, a lot of airframe performance has to be limited. Even a very good test pilot can die suddenly on the spot due to the gravity overload caused by the powerful acceleration ability of the aircraft. So many aircraft are made like this, and in many cases it is because the driver limits the extent to which the airframe can play. Just like the guns used by human beings, the technology is actually enough in many cases, but limited by the strength of the human body, it can only be designed with such power. In the foreseeable future, with the emergence of a large number of Foundation Task Force Supermen, the Foundation Horror will design a bunch of equipment for those super soldiers. As for now, Chen Feng has changed into a set of flight crew equipment, and slowly walked towards his brand new car. The world's most powerful fighter, FFR-41MR, Snow Queen. It is said that a deadly arrow remained on the earliest Homo sapiens skeleton discovered. From ancient times to the present, the warlike gene has been deeply rooted in the link of human DNA. Pursuing higher, faster, stronger, constantly breaking through oneself is the pursuit of every man. Chen Feng, who was born as a Foundation agent, has mastered the skills to skillfully control all the vehicles of human beings from ancient times to the present. From all-terrain motorcycles, assault vehicles, anti-mine ambush vehicles, to tactical heavy trucks, or infantry fighting vehicles, tanks, hovercraft, motorboats, warships, and nuclear submarines. Then he can fly helicopters of the Air Force, strategic bombers, ground attack aircraft, and fixed-wing fighter jets. Putting on the new high-intensity anti-G suit and picking up the HUD flight helmet, when Chen Feng walked out of the locker room, he felt his body become excited. Next to the hangar, the ground crew of the maintenance team had completed the maintenance work, and all the maintenance personnel in the hangar focused their attention on Chen Feng who walked in. The maintenance squad leader walked up to Chen Feng and gave a military salute. Sir, the maintenance work has been completed, and the body is in perfect condition. Thank you, old squad leader. It's a pleasure to serve you, sir. Everyone is waiting for you to test the performance of the new fighter jet. Good luck, sir. Chen Feng breathed a sigh of relief, walked to the side of FFR-41, climbed into the cockpit through the ladder, and closed the hatch cover casually. Put on the flight crew helmet, turn on the HUD of the helmet, turn on the instrument panel, and then turn on the power. After the engine warms up for a while, the HUD interface lights up. This is 001, tower, the fighter plane is ready. This is the control tower, fighter plane 001, runway 1 has been cleared, and the catapult is ready, please open the fighter plane to the ejection area to take off. 001 received. 
Chen Feng slowly started the aircraft engine, pulled the steering gear, and the fighter plane slid on the ground and moved to the designated takeoff area. The airspace is cleared and the catapult is ready for takeoff. In an instant, all the indicator lights on the runway turned green, and then the catapult under the tail of the aircraft warmed up and ejected instantly. With the blue tail flame, Chen Feng suddenly felt an extremely powerful push back. In just a few seconds, the fighter jet jumped into the sky. This was Chen Feng's first time flying a fighter jet, but he was extremely proficient. First, I got acquainted with various tactical moves. After doing a few standard yo-yo maneuvers in the air and trying the basic thrust, the feeling of soaring in the sky is fascinating. At this moment, in front of Chen Feng's HUD, a beautiful girl with white hair and blue pupils appeared in front of the screen. Commander, please use my full capabilities. You are Shifeng. Although a little surprised, Chen Feng was sure that she was Shifeng's artificial intelligence life. It seems that this Shifeng is not the original version of the aircraft in the animation world, otherwise it would not be possible to get an S-level evaluation. After just a series of driving, Chen Feng discovered that this aircraft is not built for ordinary people at all. Either it is an unmanned state controlled by artificial intelligence, or there must be a driver with extraordinary physical fitness. You must know that the most powerful ordinary ace flightman can only withstand the gravity overload of 12G, which is already challenging the limit of human beings. But for the many maneuvers that Chen Feng unintentionally flew just now, even if he was wearing this high-strength anti-G suit, the overload was at least 10 or 20 Gs. If it were an ordinary driver, he might have passed out at this time, but Chen Feng didn't seem to feel it. Well, the restrictions are lifted. Chen Feng opened the safety of the side body limiter, and instantly pressed the button. When the nose of the FFR-41 was pulled, as the color of the tail flame deepened, a huge amount of roar burst out instantly, and then a sonic boom cloud was formed when the fuselage surrounded it and broke through the sound barrier. At this moment, the surroundings of the fighter plane seemed to be as charming as wings of light. Mach 5, Mach 6. The speed has been boosted to Mach 10. At the moment, the speed of this fighter has surpassed the highest record set by the Federal Experimental Aircraft. At the moment the Federal Air Force and SHIELD both received a radar message. We found an unknown flight object near Los Angeles. Oh my god. The unknown flight object is flying at an extremely high speed. Its speed has exceeded Mach 8, Mach 9, Mach 10. Hell, we need to send our Air Force to intercept the target. But sir, we don't have any flight machines that can match its speed. As for S.H.I.E.L.D., when Nick Fury heard the news, he and his assistant Pierce looked at each other. Black Brazed Egg held the phone and asked again like the monitoring personnel over there, what is the speed of the unknown flight object you mentioned? It can't be a missile, can it? Sir, his speed has reached Mach 20 just now. The missile can't have such a maneuvering route. This is the flight device. Are aliens invading the Earth? Nick. Fury felt his head hit, and he couldn't help but make a call to Phil Coulson. Phil Coulson, you said that the intelligence detected before is that a base of the Foundation is likely to be near Los Angeles. That's right Director Nick, according to reports from Natasha Romanoff and Agent Sky, it seems to be so, what's wrong? The Foundation, ah, did the Foundation release another containment like 096? Just now we detected the existence of a suspected flight device. It. Dot its speed has reached Mach 20. At the moment, in the night sky, Tony Stark, who was driving the MKII back, suddenly heard the crazy alarm from JARVIS. Sir, there is an unknown aerial object approaching at an extremely fast speed. Its speed has reached Mach 20. What? JARVIS. What are you talking about? Mach 20. What is this thing? As soon as the words fell, a group of high-speed objects like meteors passed behind him in an instant, and then she decelerated at an extremely incredible speed and at a large elevation angle. Only then did Tony see that it was a fighter plane. Yo, Tony, what a coincidence. Are you racing mechs? Coincidentally, I'm also test driving my new wife. Tony, who is wearing the MK2 steel battle suit, looked at Chen Feng who was greeting him in the cockpit next to him with a dazed expression. Looking at the extremely streamlined aerodynamic shape of the black technology fighter, it is as agile as a bird, and even its flexibility and mobility are not lost to its own MK2 armor. Tony's eyes went straight. Wardfa. Dude, 
What kind of black technology is this? I'm Joe, this is really crazy buddy. Is it okay if I trade MK2 with you? Chen Feng gestured with disgust on his face and resolutely refused. Brother nowhere, my wife won't let me out. However, if you finish the work at hand, the foundation is still waiting for you to develop new equipment together. Well, I have time anytime. Seeing Tony wearing MK2 who seemed to have flown back thousands of kilometers away, Chen Feng suddenly thought of the plot of Iron Man. This Tony seems to have just flown back from the Atala organization. Chen Feng remembers that according to the plot of the American comics world, normally speaking, the Atala organization should belong to a small subsidiary organization called the Ten Commandments Gang. But this American comics world seems to be somewhat different from the American comics world in Chen Feng's memory. After gaining the power of the foundation, Chen Feng once investigated some organizations in the plot. However, it was discovered that there was no Ten Commandments gang, but a mysterious organization called the Twelve Round Table Council instead. This is an organization that is said to have a comparable history to Hydra. Like Hydra, this organization has been trying to rule the entire world. In almost all Western historical events, you can see the Twelve Round Table. It is rumored that even the first president of the Federation established the White Eagle Federation with the assistance of the Twelve Round Table Council. The reason why Chen Feng thought of the Twelve Round Table Council at this time was because Chen Feng learned a piece of news when he and Ophelia exchanged information that night. Did the Chaos Separatists actually receive some funding from the Council of the Twelve Round Tables at the beginning of their establishment? A Separatist faction that Ophelia did not deal with had an extremely close relationship with the Council of the Twelve Round Tables. However, this Chaos Splendor seems to be secretly contacting Stark Group shareholders, including Obadiah, who is trying to replace Tony as chairman. Just when Chen Feng was about to ask Tony about this, Shui Feng's voice came from the earphones. Commander, we found two armed targets approaching us. Do we need to conduct electronic control, or shoot them down directly? Chen Feng glanced at the radar, two F-35 AS. A Federal Air Force plane. Chen Feng glanced at the slow-moving MK2 flying beside him, and shook his head, Tony's trouble has come to him. A guest came to you, you can solve it yourself, and find a bar to discuss in detail at night. After finishing speaking, Chen Feng pulled the steering gear, FFR-41MR Shifeng quickly opened the distance from MK2 like a fairy with light wings. OMG! This fool, where did he find a fighter jet? It's so exciting! Tony! who originally thought MK2 was very fragrant, could only look at the fighter jets going away, eating the tail flames, and instantly felt that the MK2 he was wearing was not fragrant. At this moment Tony suddenly heard the siren of JARVIS. Sir, you seem to be locked. What? Report to the headquarters. Only one unidentified flight object was found, and the other unidentified flight object has disappeared. Did you shoot down the unknown target? Allow shooting down. Tony was taken aback for a moment, and then two F-35 is surrounded him, one from the left and the other from the right, and one of the F-35 is directly fired a short-range combat bomb very unceremoniously. Ward, what the hell? J-A-R-V-I-S, put me through to Colonel James. At the Foundation base, Shui Feng gracefully landed in the underground airport, and Chen Feng jumped out of the cockpit happily. Bye-bye Shui Feng, go for a drive when you have time. Miss 2B at the side handed over a bottle of happy water, and Chen Feng unscrewed it casually. After drinking tons of tons, the satisfied Chen Feng casually said to Ms. 2B, prepare a civilian car, I'm going out tonight. Compared to Chen Feng's indifferent attitude, Tony, who was riding a mech, did not go so smoothly. It took a lot of effort to get home safely. J-A-R-V-I-S, prepare a sports car, tell Pepper, don't prepare my dinner. Afterlife Bar, a bar with a strange name, but the store is very popular. Chen Feng sat at the bar like a regular customer. Tony walked into the bar, and immediately saw Chen Feng sitting at the bar. Hey, buddy, where did you find the bar? This place is really nice, but the name is a bit weird. Chen Feng smiled. I just can find these good stores. Boss, have two glasses of David Martinez. Tony looked curious. What kind of wine is this? What a weird name. Chen Feng said leisurely as if I was a regular customer and would never cheat you. 
Simply put, it's vodka mixed with whiskey, iced and cola. There is another story about this glass of wine, do you want to hear it? What story? The bar was mixing drinks in a fancy way, and soon two glasses of David Martinez were ready. Chen Feng picked up his glass and took a sip, a story about a power boy who wanted to take his beloved girl to the moon, but failed, but helped her blast a piece of sky with his fists. Fifteen minutes later, Tony drank the wine with tears streaming down his face, Adam Hammer is really not a thing. Chen Feng patted the tearful Iron Man, and patted his shoulder, well, Tony, your company is going to have an Adam Hammer to hammer you. Who? Stark can't have this kind of fool, can he? Wait, I think of someone. With Tony's intelligence, he suddenly imagined Obadiah who had been very wrong lately. Looks like you've finally found out that the Stark Corporation has an insider. Hiss, I just didn't expect that the ghost would be him, can you destroy your conscience for the sake of profit? Chen Feng gave Tony a strange look, and took another sip of his drink, as an arms dealer, is it really okay to say this? That's all in the past, Stark is no longer involved in the arms trade. That means that part of the Stark group is out of your control now. Chen Feng picked up his glass and drank it down, then stood up and patted Tony on the shoulder again. I think you can turn up the security alert, otherwise your pepper will become David's second. By the way, David actually doesn't like to drink carbonated drinks, that's what Lucy likes to drink. Also, remember to pay the bill. Tony, who had just recovered from the story and the breaking news, got another round of the knife. The abnormal containment object 008 the mother strain of the zombie virus is an extremely dangerous existence. As early as Chen Feng accepted Ophelia's surrender, Chen Feng proposed to contain the abnormal containment object 008 the mother strain of the zombie virus. However, Ophelia told Chen Feng at the time that although the chaos separatists possessed T-virus related technology, the mother strain of the abnormal containment 008 zombie virus was controlled by the chaos separatists controlled by the 12 round table council. In the hands of forces. Chaos splitters are actually the same as Hydra, internally not unified, highly divided, and even some forces within it compete with each other or even become hostile. For them, they are less lenient when dealing with internal enemies than external enemies. In order to contain the anomalous containment object 008, Chen Feng integrated Ophelia's intelligence. After sorting out the information from Ophelia, the Foundation's intelligence analysis officer found an unusual piece of news that there was something wrong with Obadiah. Obadiah is a shareholder in the Stark group. Although he has worked with both Stark and his son, this person has extremely high ambitions for the Stark group and has always wanted to take the Stark group as his own. According to the Iron Man plot, after Tony announced that the Stark group would completely abandon the military industry, the conflict between Obadiah and Tony was irreconcilable. If it weren't for wanting to use Tony's superb IQ and outstanding research ability, Obadiah would have wanted to replace him. Originally, Obadiah's ambition was gradually born with the support of the Ten Commandments gang, but there is no idiot organization like the Ten Commandments gang in this world, but the more mysterious and ancient Twelve Round Table Council. So Obadiah's performance has not deviated from the track when Tony has just been captured by the Atala organization. However, after the containment appeared and the foundation showed its prominence, Obadiah's life trajectory became strange. According to Ophelia's intelligence, Obadiah should have contacted another faction of the Chaos Separatists. During the period when Tony was not in the company, he had been secretly carrying out the personnel changes of the Stark group, inserting Chaos Splitters into the Stark group. After learning that Obadiah was suspected to be in contact with the Chaos Separatist forces controlled by the Twelve Round Table Council, Chen Feng sent Foundation agents to investigate it. Using the Foundation's powerful electronic ability, they even hacked into Obadiah's mailbox and checked his recent transaction records. At this time, the Foundation's agent discovered some clues. Obadiah seems to have been funding a certain organization recently, and this organization is actually the Atala Armed Forces. During this period, the Atala organization, which had been confirmed to have been mostly destroyed, became active again frequently. After Chen Feng discovered this, he immediately dispatched Foundation agents and reconnaissance planes to the Afghan region for reconnaissance. 
At this time, he found that the reborn Atala organization not only possessed a large number of advanced weapons and equipment, but also a large number of unfamiliar people, personnel. After Chen Feng exchanged this information with Ophelia, he discovered that a large number of strange armed personnel in the Atala organization were probably chaos splitters. During this period of time, a large number of people disappeared in all areas where the Atala armed organization was active. Although these disappearances were covered up by the chaos insurgents, the cover-ups did not hide from Foundation agents. Chen Feng tested the FFR-41MR electronic fighter today because after receiving this information, he specially chose a time when Tony came back from Afghanistan to contact him. Chen Feng believes that once he contacts Tony, S.H.I.E.L.D. and HYDRA will know about it, because they have been paying close attention to Tony. Stark, the head of the Stark group who just returned from Afghanistan. If the Council of the Twelve Round Tables has mastered the mother strain of the containment 008 zombie virus, it might have a lot of cards that Chen Feng doesn't know about. Chen Feng, who has a cautious personality, would not let the Foundation directly test the strength of the Twelve Round Table Council. The best way is to let S.H.I.E.L.D. go first, and see what Obadiah and the Twelve Round Table Council are up to. Although the abacus of Obadiah and the Twelve Round Table Council almost hit Chen Feng's face, but what kind of abacus they were planning, they had to do a lot of planning to know what would happen. Chen Feng at the moment has returned to the base headquarters of the Foundation's Paradise Island. As soon as he entered the headquarters, he saw Mrs. Ophelia and a bunch of intelligence personnel from the Foundation busy here. Chen Feng walked into the intelligence room followed by Ms. 2B, looked at the screen that had been stalking Obadiah, and asked casually, how is it? Is there any movement? Hearing Chen Feng's question, the intelligence officer immediately replied, There is movement, sir, not long ago, Obadiah seemed to have attacked Tony Stark's villa, and then he stole the arc reactor of the steel battle suit MK2. Quote. Sir, do we need to snatch the arc reactor back? Although he is very envious of the arc reactor, Chen Feng knows that this is all bait, and how can he catch big fish if he doesn't want to use the bait? So he immediately stopped the proposal. Negative, continue to observe, I think S.H.I.E.L.D. will definitely take action in the future. Based on our investigation, it appears that two agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. have come to Stark's seaside cliff house. Sure enough, S.H.I.E.L.D. just couldn't bear it. Let our people keep watching and report the progress to me at any time. Obey sir. After giving the order, Chen Feng glanced at Ophelia who was leisurely watching the show. Then Mrs. Ophelia, what do you think your internal enemy will do? Ophelia glanced at Chen Feng resentfully when she heard the words, and said with gusto, are you just thinking about information that much? Chen Feng shrugged, then what else can you worry about besides information? According to my understanding, they should have a big move. Big move? How big a move? It's likely to shock the world. That is indeed a big move. I think we need to exchange information in depth tonight. Madam, you have helped us win the initiative in this war, and everything is not over yet. Tony, who was in high spirits in Afghanistan in the morning, was in a state of embarrassment at, at the moment. Tony never expected that this old guy, Obadiah, would actually go for a robbery and sneak attack. I didn't notice for a while that I was attacked by Obadiah. Even his new, newly built arc reactor was snatched away by Obadiah. Now that Obadiah has disappeared, Pepper is bandaging Tony's wound with a distressed expression. Just then, two unexpected guests came to the door. The fully armed widow sister and Sky saw Tony in a panic as soon as they entered the villa. Tony didn't expect that he was caught by two agents just like that when he was attacked in a panic. Widow sister Tony has seen it and has impressions. I remember you, didn't you apply for an assistant a few days ago? Ha, huh, you guys don't even hide it. The real identity is the agent of the Logistics and Attack Bureau. He broke into the house in the middle of the night, but seriously violated the federal law. The widow ignored Tony's broken mouth, but put away her pistol. Mr. Stark, you are in danger. We were ordered to come here to protect you. Tony was not polite, he didn't give the other party a good look at all, and said sarcastically, then you were late. Seeing that the situation was still under control, Sky next to the widow asked in a low voice, who did it? Pepper didn't let Tony continue to talk but looked worried, it's Obadiah, he seems to have snatched something from Tony's laboratory. 
Are you guys from the Federation who were ordered to protect Tony? Did you intercept Obadiah just now? The widow shook her head. We didn't meet Obadiah, he should be picked up by someone. The widow looked at the injured Tony solemnly and suggested, Mr. Stark, your current situation is very dangerous. According to our information, you are being targeted. You'd better listen to our arrangement and move to a safe place. Quote. After Tony heard the proposal, he rejected it without thinking. I don't trust you, I received a warning today that Obadiah might do some bad things, but I didn't expect him to come to sneak attack, hell knew he should have been disqualified as a visitor. Hearing Tony's words, the widow seemed to think of something and asked, who gave you the warning? Mr. Stark, is it the Foundation? That's right, the Foundation gave me a warning today, but I didn't expect Obadiah to act so fast. But your house is likely to be attacked again. According to intelligence, Obadiah should be in collusion with an organization that can seriously threaten the security of the Federation. Mr. Stark, I hope you can follow our arrangement and move to a reliable place, it's not safe here. Pepper on the side seemed very worried. Yes, Tony, you just follow their arrangements. It's not safe here now, and your condition is a bit poor. Tony seemed to think of something and said, I thought of a place. Your name is Natalie. Rushman. You may call me Agent Natasha Romanoff, of the SHIELD Anomaly Containment Team. Okay, I'm going to make a call, and you should know who I'm calling. Foundation. Yes, I only trust the Foundation now. After all, they saved my life. I can't trust you now. Both Natasha Romanoff and Sky were silent, there was no way, the Foundation's prestige was here, coupled with the previous friendship, it was understandable for Tony. Stark to trust the Foundation more. J-A-R-V-I-S, call me this number, 10XXXXXX. After a while, the phone seemed to connect. Ah, it's me, Tony. Stark, buddy, everything you said has been verified, Obadiah really has a problem. Yes, I was attacked by Obadiah, and some important assets of the Stark group were stolen. Can I ask for assistance from the Foundation? After a while Tony ended the call, looking relieved. One more thing, there are two agents from the What Attack and What Security Bureau here. So this Agent Natasha Romanoff, and this. Sky. Oh, Agent Sky, the commander of the Foundation, Chen Feng, said that he would send support and that the Foundation would shelter me. He invited the two of you to the Foundation's base here for information exchange. I don't know if the two of you are asking for convenience or. I see. We'll follow Mr. Stark to the Foundation base. After speaking, Natasha Romanoff and Sky immediately gave Phil Coulson a communication. After learning that the Foundation intends to invite the Widow Sister and Sky to the Foundation base for information exchange, Phil Coulson agreed without thinking. At the moment S.H.I.E.L.D. faced the Chaos Separatists who appeared out of nowhere. Since the appearance of 096, it seems that various abnormal events in the entire Federation have continued to occur. Even after the abnormal 096 shy person was contained, S.H.I.E.L.D. was also involved in a large number of abnormal situations. Now it seems that it should all be the work of the Chaos Splitters, and the secret war between the two sides has not stopped even after the abnormal containment 096 the shy person was contained. In just a few days, S.H.I.E.L.D. appeared in a situation of hundreds of casualties, which made S.H.I.E.L.D. extremely anxious. At this time, to get a helping hand from the Foundation, Nick. Fury and Phil Coulson, the black stewed egg, can be said to be what they wished for. Not long after, the V44X Blackfish transport plane dispatched by the Foundation and a group of Foundation task force members arrived at Stark's seaside cliff villa. The widow, Sky, Pepper Pepper, and the injured Tony boarded the V44X Blackfish transport helicopter and flew to the Foundation base under the escort of the Foundation task force. Welcome to the Foundation, you are safe, Tony and Miss Pepper. As soon as Pepper helped Tony out of the cabin, he saw Chen Feng and several officers from the Foundation greet him below. Chen Feng warmly bumped Tony's fists, seeing his bruised nose and swollen face, with a bandage on his head, he laughed and said, Dude, it's too miserable for you to look like this. Hearing this, Tony's face was filled with resentment, and veins burst out, it's not that old Obadiah, come cheat, come sneak attack. Seeing this, Chen Feng comforted Tony and said, It's okay, stay at the Foundation's base, your safety is guaranteed. After reminiscing with Tony, 
Chen Feng greeted the widow and Sky who had just got off the plane. Welcome to Foundation Paradise Island Base, Agents Natasha Romanoff and Agent Sky. Chen Feng's expression was very sincere, as if he wanted to sincerely help and guide S.H.I.E.L.D. to solve the incident. It is also my honor to visit the Foundation's base, thank you very much, Commander Chen Feng. After shaking hands with the widow sister and Sky, Chen Feng suggested, let's talk in another place. As he spoke, he took the lead in boarding a traffic vehicle inside the base. After everyone else got into the car, Chen Feng's expression was solemn, and he solemnly explained the cause of the incident. Tony, I know you are confused. What is going on with Obadiah? According to the Foundation's intelligence system, we have learned that Obadiah is suspected of joining the Chaos Separatist Organization, which was previously formed by traitors from the Foundation. For some reason, renegade Chaos insurgents are carrying very dangerous containment. After hearing Chen Feng's words, Tony, the widow sister and Sky were all stunned. Only Pepper asked Tony what a containment was in a low voice, somewhat confused. After Tony finished explaining, Pepper Pepper looked worried. There is no way, the threat of the containment is too terrible, even the most powerful nuclear weapon of mankind, if the yield is not enough, I dare not say that it can cause at least millions of deaths. But the containment can do it, and these weird things don't make sense at all, and don't even obey the laws of physics. And the Chaos Separatist, who is a defector from the Foundation, doesn't look like an organization to be messed with, so Pepper still looks worried. Seeing this, Tony was relieved. It's okay, we will be safe in the Foundation base. While talking, they saw the FFR-41MR Shifeng and her three FRX-99 Light Knight fighters parked on the tarmac for an instant and then looked at the busy mobile task force at the airport, and instantly felt a lot more at ease. At this time, the widow who had been silent all this time spoke up. Mr. Chen Feng, has the foundation confirmed that Obadiah is colluding with the chaos separatists? Chen Feng nodded affirmatively. That's right, I heard that S.H.I.E.L.D. has had a lot of confrontations with chaos separatists recently. Do you need support from the foundation? Chaos separatists are formidable enemies, right? Hearing Chen Feng's earnest suggestion, Natasha Romanoff shook her head. Thank you for your kindness, but S.H.I.E.L.D. can still deal with the Chaos Insurgents now, does Mr. Chen Feng know the exact location of Obadiah and the Chaos Insurgents? Quote. The specific location has not been investigated yet, but recently we have detected a large number of suspicious electronic signals near Hell's Kitchen and we discovered that Obadiah's private jet took off in an emergency not long ago, and the destination is New York. It is New York, the economic and cultural center of the Federation, and it has a huge influence. If the chaos separatists who have mastered the abnormal containment want to make a big disturbance there, that day all must be pierced. Thinking of this, the widow couldn't help asking with an anxious look in her eyes, Mr. Chen Feng, can you tell us what containment the chaos separatists have? How does it compare to the anomaly 096 that was previously contained by the Foundation? Hearing this question, Chen Feng pondered for a moment and said, According to the information we know, the anomalous containment held by the Chaos Separatists is likely to be 008, codenamed Zombie Virus, it is not the same type as 096, but the damage it can cause but much bigger than 096. Hearing this, both the Widow Sister and Sky's expressions changed, and they became even more restless. Zombie Virus. Does it mean that 008 can turn people into zombies like those in movies? Chen Feng smiled wryly, actually, that was the effect of the original containment 008, and the current containment 008 seems to have produced some mutations. The infection ability of the current mutated 008 mother strain far exceeds that of the original version. If it is released, it can destroy a huge city in just a few days and turn it into a purgatory on earth. The matter is serious. After hearing the exact news, Widow's sister and Sky became paralyzed. The state of mind was like a roller coaster, with ups and downs. It was originally an abnormal situation, but it might be upgraded into a doomsday crisis. And Tony and Pepper are also numb, how could it suddenly be the end of the world? But before they calmed down, they saw Chen Feng's adjutant, Ms. 2B, hurrying over with a pad. Commander, we received a distress signal from an agent of the New York Global Strategic Bureau, and finally locked the location in Hell's Kitchen. Several people looked at each other, Hell's Kitchen. Isn't that where the abnormal signal was detected? 
a distress signal from the Global Strategic Bureau. Although Chen Feng and the Foundation now have the name of the National Strategic Security Bureau, the Foundation has not been in contact with the National Strategic Security Bureau until now. Seeing this, Chen Feng did not hesitate, looked at the widow sister and Sky decisively, and said, Agents Natasha Romanoff and Agent Sky, I will send Foundation agents to go to Hell's Kitchen with you to investigate the truth. Unfortunately, I thought I can show you around the base. It's okay, Mr. Chen Feng, the situation is urgent, please help us arrange transportation. Miss 2B, please arrange transportation for them, and let Colonel Han send a mobile task force to investigate the incident. As you order, Commander. After Chen Feng finished his orders, he looked at the widow sister and Sky with a regretful face and said apologetically, then you are welcome to visit us next time. The Foundation will continue to pay attention to this matter, and we can provide information support to S.H.I.E.L.D. at any time. Sister Widow and Sky are sitting on the V-44X Blackfish transport plane. Compared with the transport plane they took before, Blackfish is much better in all aspects. More spacious cabin, relatively comfortable seats, smoother flight stability, faster speed. This time, the Widow and Sky will cooperate with a team of mobile task force members to investigate the distress signal sent by the agent in the whole territory. Vera, a female intelligence officer of the Foundation, handed a tablet to the Widow and Sky. The intelligence department of the Foundation discovered the distress signal sent by the agent in the whole territory not long ago. We discovered through the internal network of the Global Strategy Bureau that their goal is to investigate a recent case of an unusual homeless disappearance in Hell's Kitchen. However, this team code named Mole sent out this distress video not long ago. As he spoke, the intelligence officer clicked on the tablet. A video appeared on the tablet, and an agent who looked seriously injured looked at the screen in despair and said in a low voice. This is the Mole Squad. We were attacked by a large number of unknown armed men in the number 5 target building in Hell's Kitchen. There are a lot of signs of biochemical experiments left here. They, they are about to find this place, our ammunition is about to run out, please send reinforcements as soon as possible. A voiceover came, they are about to break through the line of defense. What kind of monster is that? Fire. There was a burst of gunfire, what is this? Using a grenade, accompanied by a few screams, the picture was interrupted. Looking at the interrupted picture, the widow sister and Sky fell into deep thought. It seems that the people of the Global Strategic Bureau have encountered something. Is it a containment object? This possibility is not ruled out. Miss Vera, the intelligence officer, continued to narrate the briefing, we still have 40 minutes to arrive in New York, and then we will wait. I have received a text message. Turn on the web. Check out the most popular YouTube videos. Intelligence officer Vera clicked on YouTube full of doubts, and saw that a video had nearly 100 million views and nearly hundreds of thousands of comments in just one hour. Vera clicked the play button, and saw an ancestral underworld filter, and a masked man wearing a cloak appeared in front of the screen. Federal citizens and ordinary people around the world, the agents of the Global Strategic Bureau controlled by the Abnormal Control Foundation are secretly ruling the world. They're controlling you with your phone calls, your emails, your internet browsing data, your life history, your bills. This mysterious agency controlled by the Federation controls cameras and electronic equipment all over the world, and controls the satellite network to monitor everyone. Among us, maybe their agents are hiding. Countless agents of the Global Strategic Bureau are lurking around you in various identities, silently controlling this country and even the whole world. They control everything, eliminate dissidents, and eradicate all existences that threaten their rule. They hold unimaginable supernatural power, science and technology and resources to maintain this evil underground empire, but their rule is coming to an end. Hundreds of thousands of SCS federal agents are maintaining their tyranny. However, the terrible bondage will not hinder the yearning for freedom, and we will end their evil tyranny. In the screen, there are countless scenes of the agents of the Global Strategic Bureau in action, as well as various shots of executing enemies in dark corners. Accompanied by the narration and narration of the masked man, the scene is extremely shocking. After all, what is the existence of the federal government, the people of the Federation naturally know it best, and so do people all over the world. 
Hearing the existence of such a terrible secret agency that surpassed Fobol and the CIA, it instantly detonated the federal government's network, and even the whole world was in an uproar at the moment. The people of the Federation don't trust the Federation ZF very much. After all, they have done too many dirty things in the past. After at the moment's foundation and the Global Strategic Bureau were exposed, the barrage and screens were almost one-sided. The Federation is really using secret agent rule to maintain their evil rule. Look, I thought this was a lighthouse, who knows that like Shanann, it is ruled by evil. We want freedom. The Foundation's evil reign must end. Where are those superheroes? Where's Iron Man? Go kill the Foundation. Upstairs, maybe Iron Man is with the Foundation. It's terrible. Aren't ordinary people like insects in front of such a terrifying behemoth like the Foundation? There are so many missing persons in the Federation every year, so they are all secretly executed by the Foundation, right? Pick up your guns and take to the streets to protest. As long as we unite, we can destroy the evil rule of the Foundation. Old Texas agrees. The existence of the Foundation violates the free spirit of the Federation. Looking at the negative comments one after another, Miss Intelligence Officer Vera's face was so gloomy that water dripped out. The widow's sister and Sky looked at each other in blank dismay. What organization is exposing the foundation? Is it a chaos splitter? Miss Vera, don't worry, this must be a terrible conspiracy against the foundation. Maybe the chaos separatists are unwilling to make a comeback after the last failure, let's not mess up. The headquarters of the foundation. The foundation was exposed by the 12 round table council and chaos splitters, and gained 100,000 rumor points. Listening to the system's prompt, Chen happily beamed. Ophelia leaned on Chen Feng's shoulder to watch the video, and joked, The foundation has been splashed with dirty water and exposed to the public's attention, but you look happy instead. Chen Feng didn't care about this and said, The old-fashioned underworld filter gameplay, and the unwarranted dirty water, tisk, but this camera is very handsome, it really looks like an evil organization that rules the world, very nice. You don't care at all. How can a real strong person care about the thoughts of insects? That might still be a good thing. It seems that everything is under your control. Chen Feng smiled mysteriously. In the face of absolute power, these little tricks are meaningless. Human civilization needs the foundation as a shield to protect them. Once this shield is lost, people will understand its preciousness. Chapter 59 Gwen and Aloeather, The Eve of the Eruption Gwen Stacy was carrying a pink girly school bag and a notebook in her hand as she followed the long queue of students. This is the Biological Research Institute of Imperial State University, which is jointly invested by the Umbrella Company and the Austrian Biopharmaceutical Company under the Austrian Group. Therefore, both the scale and the level of confidentiality are extremely high. Being able to visit here is a rare practical opportunity for high school students of Midtown Science High School, an affiliated school of Empire State University. When Gwen and her classmates visited a kind of silver spider, she suddenly saw the nerdy classmate beside her who was carefully writing a report, Peter. Parker suddenly screamed. Seeing this, the kind-hearted Gwen stepped forward and asked, Student Peter. What's wrong with you? I'm fine, I seem to have been bitten by something. As soon as the words fell, Gwen suddenly saw a silver-white little Spider-Man that looked like a ghost jumping into her hand, and the girl couldn't help but screamed in fright. Suddenly, the team became chaotic. Gwen only felt a heart-wrenching pain coming from the back of her right hand. She glanced at the back of her right hand that suddenly became red and swollen, tears streaming down her face. What happened here? A melodious and crisp female voice came, and Gwen looked up only to see a female researcher wearing red-rimmed glasses and a white coat walking over. Ah, it seems that classmate Gwen was bitten by something. Somehow, Peter didn't say anything about what seemed to be biting himself too. The female researcher looked at Gwen and said, Well, this student, the back of your hand is very red and swollen. Maybe you need to check it. I'll take you to the infirmary to have a look. After speaking, Gwen couldn't help but took her hand and walked to the infirmary. Not long after, Gwen, who was brought to the infirmary, couldn't help feeling a little nervous and anxious, because the pain on the back of her hand continued and the inflammation didn't subside. As if seeing Gwen's nervousness, the female researcher gave a sigh of relief, 
it's not a big problem, there are some anti-inflammatory drugs here, just apply some topical antibiotics and it will be fine. Don't be nervous, you can call me Dr. Aloweather, what's your name? Gwen. Gwen Stacy. Okay, Gwen, you take this anti-inflammatory drug first. Gwen didn't think too much, picked up the anti-inflammatory medicine that Aloweather handed over, and swallowed it, only feeling a little groggy in the head. I feel dizzy, am I okay? Dr. Aloweather. It's okay, it's normal. Aloweser raised the corners of her mouth slightly, and then secretly put a small white box containing an injection into Gwen's school bag. Then, she took another look at the injection left on her body and breathed a sigh of relief. Then she carefully looked at Gwen's student ID card, Midtown High School of Science and Technology, Class A of the second year of high school. After writing down the information on the student ID card, Aloweather took a deep look at the school bag. After about 15 minutes, Gwen gradually woke up from the groggy state. As soon as Gwen opened her eyes, she saw Aloweather's pretty face, and saw this charming big sister touching her forehead with some concern, and asked softly. How do you feel about your body? I was worried that you might be bitten by some bad insects and ants, which would cause severe inflammation, so I gave you special medicine. Gwen nodded in a daze. I feel better, Dr. Aloweather. You can leave after a short rest, your visit is coming to an end. Thank you, Dr. Aloweather, I'm much better now. Thirty minutes later, Aloweser watched Gwen return to the visiting line. She quickly took off her white coat, and then changed into a black hoodie and pleated skirt. After that, she took off her glasses and tied up her long black and red hair. We must expose them this time. Aloweather took a deep breath, and then made a phone call. I'm Kay, meet at the agreed place. After finishing speaking, Aloweather hurriedly left the infirmary and walked outside the research institute. It's just that she didn't notice that she had just left the institute, and all her actions were being monitored. Fifteen minutes later, in a dark alley near Empire State University, Aloweather arrived at the agreed place, but there was no one in sight. There was a warning sign in her heart, and she saw two figures hidden in the shadows. Dr. Aloweser, I think you should know the fate of betraying us. You did a stupid thing. HMPH, any conscientious researcher will make such a choice after seeing everything you have done. Conscience. Dr. Aloweser, you have participated in every experiment, and the blood on your hands is no less than mine. That's why I want to atone. What are you trying to do? Where is Miss Catherine the reporter? What have you done to her? You'll be with her soon, Ellie Weatherbow. After speaking, flames suddenly appeared in the pocket of the man in black. In just 10 seconds, two Lock 18 pistols poured 36 bullets at poor Dr. Eloesser. It's just that no one noticed that a bullet pierced through the potion in her pocket. The pupils of Eloesser, who was lying in a pool of blood, gradually dilated, and her eyes widened with blurred vision, looking at the pair of ruthless eyes in front of her, and blood seeped out from the corner of her mouth. Target cleared, ready to erase other insiders. Drag her to the laboratory morgue and dispose of it. Tisk, it's a pity that such a beautiful girl did a stupid thing. I don't understand what these researchers are thinking. She is obviously involved in every step. Who knows what she's thinking, what the hell is this? Shit, looks like the chick came out with something and got hit by a bullet, there was a spill. Don't bother, just pretend you don't know. If the higher-ups know that this kind of basket was exposed, we will be in trouble. Let the cleaners come over and disinfect it with disinfectant, and it will not leave any traces. A cold female corpse was pushed by a cart, with pale skin, a pretty face and a blood-stained white shirt. Originally black and red hair of different colors, at the moment turned into red and white, and matched with that pale face, like a sleeping vampire queen. A cleaner in protective clothing was pushing the cart. He didn't know if it was his illusion. He always felt that the corpse in front of him seemed to move. Hey, is the air conditioner turned on too low? It's so cold. It's always been this temperature. The cleaner pushed the cart cursingly, and was about to throw her on the dissection table. At this moment, he clearly saw that the corpse moved. This corpse moved a bit. What are you yelling about? This fool has been punched dozens of holes by American Juhay, is it because you are dazzled? The companion walked over as he spoke, and then the companion saw the female corpse's eyelashes tremble slightly, and a pair of wine-red eyes were looking at him blankly. Gift crab. 
She's alive. Aloesser looked blankly at the two cleaners in front of her who were dressed like soldiers of the chemical defense force, and the next second she saw one of them tremblingly pulling out a pistol. When the muzzle of the black hole was pointed at her, Aloesser felt her mind was blank, and then she subconsciously raised her right hand, and easily cut off the opponent's neck. Another cleaner pissed in fright, constantly swearing, then raised his gun and shot at Aloesser crazily, but something terrible happened. He emptied a magazine, and all the bullets hit the dead woman accurately, but she seemed to be fine. I saw Aloether's right hand pressed against his head, and immediately after, he felt as if he was melting. He and the clothes on him, even the guns, turned into a flesh-like liquid, and then were completely absorbed by Aloesser. At this moment, Aloesser saw the memory of this man. Dispose of today's female corpse. Be careful that there may be leaks. Remember to wear protective clothing. Then I will leave this place to you. We are going back to return. Aloether got up from the dissecting table, staggered to find the passage, and then she saw a blood-stained hoodie beside her. In the blank brain, a trace of the original memory vaguely emerged. Gwen Stacy. I know this person. Maybe she knows who I am. Aloether muttered to herself, and then took out something from the hoodie, when several other cleaners saw Aloether standing here. Immediately afterwards, the alarm sounded loudly, and along with the alarm, the armed guards protecting the processing facility rushed over immediately. However, they found that they seemed to have encountered a terrifying humanoid monster, whose fragile body contained terrifying power. Even if she doesn't know anything about fighting, she can rely on her strong physical fitness to smash a person to death with a single punch, and her figure is like a ghost. Although bullets can hurt her, once she is injured, she will be like the legend in the legend. Demons generally absorb those armed guards who are captured to recover from injuries. What's even more frightening is that as the red and black flesh and blood of the guards were absorbed one after another, she seemed to have absorbed the combat experience of these people. Not only is the movement sharper and more skillful, but the combat power is also more terrifying. At this moment, more guards arrived, and Aloesser did not choose to fight, but used both feet to escape. The heavy protective isolation door was closing, when a ghostly figure flashed out. Aloether came to the parking lot, a helicopter passed over Aloether's head, and then the searchlights made Aloether's eyes hurt. At this time, she actually lifted a car on the parking lot, and threw the car weighing several tons away like a helicopter in the air under the terrified eyes of the flight crew. Accompanied by a loud bang, batch after batch of elite soldiers wearing full armor and armored vehicles tried to block Aloesser here. However, she just simply accelerated and ran, and then leapt over the high protective wall in the facility, leaving behind a group of dumbfounded soldiers. In the Manhattan neighborhood, a woman with red and white hair in a blood-stained shirt shuttles through the busy streets. The drivers who drove the vehicles were shocked to find that a beautiful woman was shuttling on the road with constant traffic, and her speed was even faster than those cars with a speed of 80 or 90 kilometers per hour. Gift crab. Is it 911? We found a woman walking on the road, she, she ran faster than cars. Please don't waste police resources sir, stop joking. However, after a while, the operator of the NYPD police station was surprised to find that there were so many calls to the police, and it seemed that it was not a prank at all. Gwen Stacy was awakened by the screeching siren outside the window, and she came to the living room rubbing her sleepy eyes. I don't know if it's Gwen's illusion, but she always feels that her eyesight is much better than before. Mom, Dad, has he received another police mission? Hearing her daughter's interrogation, Gwen's mother, Helen, shrugged her shoulders with a helpless expression on her face. There seemed to be a lot of warning signs tonight. Are you feeling better? When Gwen heard her mother's greeting, she smiled like a good girl and nodded in response. Well, it's much better, I feel great. As soon as she finished speaking, she saw her father, George, open the door with a serious face, and made a worried proposal to Helen as he entered the door. Helen, asked Gwen to take a leave of absence from the school tomorrow. You will stay in the countryside for a few days. I received news that Manhattan seems to be on lockdown. It seems that something serious has happened. In the classroom of Midtown Science High School, Gwen Stacy was absent-mindedly listening to the teacher's lecture. Ever since visiting the science lab at Empire State University yesterday, Gwen Stacy has been feeling like something is wrong. 
she found that her five senses had become extremely sharp. Not only her strength increased greatly, but also her movements were so flexible and sharp that she was not like a normal person. Physical changes are one thing, and another is the conversation between her father, George Stacy, and her mother, Helen Stacy. Although her parents' conversation was very low last night, she could hear it clearly even outside. Gwen, who lives in Queens, heard that there might be chaos in the city. She is still a high school student, and Gwen, who has not seen much in the world, seems a little uneasy. Peter. Parker is one of Gwen's friends in school, because Peter. Parker likes Gwen's best friend, Mary Jane, so the two met. At yesterday's spider exhibit at Empire State University of Technology, Gwen also saw that Peter. Parker was bitten by a spider. But Peter didn't admit it. Today Gwen wanted to talk to Peter. Parker about this matter several times, but she never had the chance. Gwen stayed restless until the school bell rang and the teacher announced the end of get out of class. Amidst the cheers of the students, Gwen looked at Peter. Parker who was packing his school bag and was about to leave, hesitation for a while, but finally did not stop him. She silently packed the books and put them back into the bag. At this moment, she suddenly felt something in the middle of the bag. It is a rectangular metal sealed box, which looks very high tech, and has a fingerprint lock on it. Who would put it in my school bag? Gwen was full of doubts, but she thought of her parents' instructions. Today, her mother Helen will pick her up from school, and then ask the teacher for a few days off to go back to her hometown in the countryside. So Gwen didn't think much about it, and temporarily ignored the weird metal box, but left the school with her school bag on her back. Gwen was standing by the road beside the school gate waiting for her mother Helen as usual. At this moment, a strange new BMW M3 stopped in front of her and opened the door. A familiar voice from the cold big sister came, get in the car. Dr. Aloesser, why are you? The person sitting in the car was yesterday's Dr. Aloesser, but she looked very strange, and for some reason, her hair had turned into snow white and red hair of different colors intertwined. And she was wearing a sweater with a black hood, looking mysterious. Gwen immediately became alert. Sorry, I can't go with you, Dr. Alloweather. Gwen looked vigilantly at the big sister who was completely different from yesterday and looked like a bad woman. However, before she had time to be vigilant, Gwen suddenly saw several men in black with unfriendly expressions surrounding them. These guys are obviously holding a guy, no matter how they look, they look like standard school shooters. Stay still, little girl. At this time, Alloweather gave her a wink. Facing the sudden turn, Gwen flipped into the car without hesitation for a second and slammed the door. Aloesser kicked the accelerator and the M3 immediately ejected and started. At the moment gunshots rang out. High school students and parents after school, pedestrians screamed and fled in all directions. The scene was extremely chaotic. A few bullets hit the M3's rearview mirror and damaged the windshield, but Aloesser drove the car calmly. In the sky, two mysterious black helicopters closely followed the M3, and one after another mysterious black MPV without license plate appeared on the road. At this time, Aloesser braked and drifted, and the M3 drove into an alley along the way. Get off. Aloesser said that she got out of the car with Gwen. While talking, she took Gwen's hand and stepped on the wall of the high-rise building and ran up suddenly. Let go of me, I can go by myself. Speaking of which, Gwen broke away from Aloether's somewhat surprised eyes, and actually climbed the tall building to the top of the building like Aloether. On the roof of the building, Gwen stared at Aloether, two beauties, one big and one small, opened their mouths at the same time. Do you know anything? Quote question mark question mark question mark quote. The two looked confused, and then Aloether looked at Gwen who was also puzzled, and couldn't help but sighed while holding her forehead. I, lost part of my memory, I just remember that there seems to be something in your place. So it's all your fault. Then the change in my body is also your fault. Gwen emotionally took out the metal box from her school bag. Aloether covered her head in pain, and shook her head as if she couldn't remember anything. I don't know either. As soon as the words fell, Aloether suddenly changed her expression and shouted, be careful. As they spoke, the two of them suddenly moved away only to hear a loud bang, and the position where the two were just now was hit by a missile that exploded and blew up the platform into a mess. 
It was an AH-1Z gunship that fired the missile from a distance of about 7 or 800 meters. However, the flight crew stared dumbfounded at the two people who moved away and exclaimed, are these two still human? While speaking, the falling Gwen subconsciously launched a ball of cobweb towards the opposite building, and then jumped high. Aloeather floated and glided in the air like a bat, and then the two landed on the roof of a building opposite. The two looked at each other, sprinted like flying at high speed on the roof platform, and jumped out, even the AH-1Z couldn't keep locking them. On the platform of a safe old apartment, Gwen looked at Aloeather with a complicated face. Now, dot she seems to never be able to return to a normal life. Gwen kicked a soda can angrily, we, what should we do now? Look for a reporter named Catherine. She, seems to have given me an address so that I can contact her. Gwen looked angrily at the bad woman who made her board the pirate ship, and snorted, let's go. Go find the woman you mentioned named Catherine, and I want to return to a normal life. Aloesser tilted her head, stared at the girl with wine-red eyes, and said softly, isn't it good to be a superman? It's, it's not bad, it's just that I'm not happy to be involved in the trouble you caused. A moment later, the backs of the two women jumped off the platform. Chapter 62 Whole Realm Agent, Always Be Loyal Somewhere in Hell's Kitchen in Manhattan, the division has fallen into a safe house. My patience is limited, how much backup do you have, and the deployment of SHD, abbreviation of the Global Strategic Bureau, please tell me. Accompanied by the faint smell of blood coming from the tip of her nose, Agent Catherine opened her eyes with difficulty. What caught my eye was my companion, Agent Code named Sea Otter. This once delicate and cute Chinese girl with twin ponytails and two dimples in her smile, at the moment's beautiful face has become bruised and swollen, and her body is even more ragged and blood-stained. The sea otter was grabbed by her hair, but she looked very weak, even her voice was extremely weak, but her eyes were as determined as fire. Don't try to get any information from me. Are you Chinese? There is an old saying in your country that a man who knows the current affairs is a good man. I don't want to see you, a young girl with delicate skin and tender flesh, suffer from flesh and blood, so you should be honest. In an awkward Yingzhou style, this interrogator is actually of the blood of a child. New and old hatred, Miss Sea Otter stared at him firmly, and categorically refused. No way. Yuck Si, I just admire tough guys, but I want to see how tough you really are. As he spoke, he took out the dagger, and raised Miss Sea Otter's white and scarred right hand. If you don't answer the information again, I'll chop off your fingers one by one. You better think clearly. The girl's contemptuous smile answered him. Very good. You pissed me off. After that, he raised the knife and dropped his hand, and with a scream from the agent Sea Otter, a bloody finger fell to the ground. Catherine looked at her companion who was being tortured inhumanely, but her mouth was covered but she couldn't say anything. I just listened to the tragic wailing for nearly half an hour. The interrogators tried their best, but this little agent, who looked delicate and naive, turned out to be a tough one, and all the fingers of his hands were chopped off one by one. Although he was interrogating, he only felt fear. Even people from Fobol, KGB, and CIA had already confessed. He mentioned the weak sea otter, gave the female agent a hoarse voice fiercely, and interrogated for the last time, last chance. Have no idea, bah. The sea otter actually spat a mouthful of blood onto the interrogator's face. The expression on the interrogator's face was still grim. He wiped and licked the blood on his face, and then showed a cruel grin. The blood-stained cold dagger touched the white neck, accompanied by two muffled groans, Miss Sea Otter's eyes widened, and then her pupils began to slack, and her age stopped at 20 years old forever. Catherine looked at Miss Sea Otter lying in a pool of blood with tearing eyes, and the judge walked in front of her with her blood and a hideous expression on her face. At this moment, her breathing became heavy. The cloth strip that blocked Catherine's agent's mouth was taken out. It's your turn, tell the information, you can live. Catherine felt her heart beating faster, but she was silent, just staring at the other party with indignant and cold eyes, without saying a word. Why are they all like this? Look at N.M. Stinky. The interrogator felt that he was going crazy. He grabbed the dagger angrily and grabbed Catherine's head. The cold dagger pierced into the beautiful eyes in an instant, and the scream like a nightingale surrounded the room. He kicked Catherine away, then pulled the pistol from the holster and moved his finger to the trigger. 
It's just that the cruel interrogator didn't notice at all that the room at the moment had already become extremely silent, and his companion had already disappeared. A slender palm held his gunner down. A lazy and gentle female voice sounded, Sure enough, I knew you might still be alive. The interrogator wanted to raise his hand, but was horrified to find that he couldn't lift it at all, and the slender palm was getting harder and harder, and he heard the sound of his own bones breaking. A woman with a gentle but creepy smile was staring at herself with those ruby-like eyes. The interrogator wanted to scream, but found that he was melting into a pool of blood, and he couldn't even scream. A girl with blonde short hair covered her mouth and walked to Catherine's side with an expression of discomfort on her face. She swallowed nervously, and asked tremblingly, You. Are you okay? Aloweather took the strap and walked to Catherine, helped her up, and covered her blind eyes that were seeping blood. Then she unceremoniously asked in a light tone, Catherine, I have lost part of my memory, I have brought the things, please tell me the whole thing. Seeing this, Gwen was so kind that she couldn't help but grabbed Aloweather's collar and yelled, hunting. She's already like this, she needs treatment, and she is not suitable for any interrogation at this time. Aloweser pushed her hand away coldly, we have no time to waste. When the two were at a stalemate, Catherine's weak voice came, she is right, there is no time, to waste. I am an agent of the Global Strategy Bureau, and I am ordered to contact you to get the Black Light virus jointly developed by the Umbrella Company and the Black Watch organization. According to our intelligence, Black Watch and the Chaos Separatist organization that controls Umbrella Corporation plan to conduct brutal biochemical experiments in the federal territory. No one knows what they plan to do. For this reason, the Global Strategy Bureau set up an investigation team, and I am one of the investigators. Our operation failed. There was a mutiny within the Global Strategic Bureau. I lost contact with the response team mole. Unfortunately, my companions and I were captured. Not long ago, I got a terrible news. The umbrella seems to be planning a terrible action, which is related to the life and death of the entire Federation and even hundreds of millions of people in the entire human race. Hearing that Aloweather breathed a sigh of relief, she pondered for a moment, then whispered, so, what are you going to do? If possible, escort me to the Redstone Fort military base on number. 8 Road in the suburbs to report. Can you still move? No problem. Catherine covered her face with a bandage, walked slowly to Miss C. Otter's body, bent down, closed her eyes, and took off the nameplate of the agent. Catherine's lips trembled, and she whispered, Rest in peace Agent C. Otter, the Global Strategy Bureau remembers your loyalty. Washington, D.C., Shield Base. Nick, Fury, Pierce, and Phil Coulson and other Shield executives are looking at the dignified Natasha Romanoff on the screen. Director Nick, according to the information we received from the surviving agents of the Global Strategic Security Bureau, the chaos separatists are suspected to be planning to use biochemical viruses to brew a major disaster. The Redstone Fort base where we are located is suspected to have been infected by man-made virus releases on the open day, and a large number of National Guard soldiers have suffered from unknown infections. These soldiers all suffered from vomiting, fever, and unconsciousness. The hospitals on the base were overcrowded, and the National Guard stationed here almost lost their combat effectiveness. Please make a decision early, the situation is getting worse. After listening to the Widow Sisters report, Nick. Fury rubbed his bald head with a headache, and then said to the widow sister. Thank you for your information, Detective Natasha Romanoff, you still need to continue the investigation, I will let Phil Coulson bring people from the anomaly handling team to give you reinforcements, let's do it first. After speaking, Nick, Fury closed the communication. Then the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. glanced at the two fidgeting subordinates, and said, so this is the status quo. Winter is coming, maybe this terrible crisis will destroy the entire Federation, we must not allow the Federation to be destroyed chaos insurgency destroys. Phil Coulson wiped the cold sweat from his forehead, and said bravely, but Director Nick, the situation in various places is very unstable now. According to the information we have received, a flu has almost swept through several states in just a few days, at least hundreds of thousands of people have been infected. Pierce also nodded and added, the entire shield has been mobilized, Director Nick, our manpower is limited, and we may not be able to handle this crisis without using some special backup resources. Do you want to use your cards? Nick. 
Fury thought hard, hesitated for a while, but he decisively rejected Pierce's proposal. Now is not the time, let's think of a way. At this time, Phil Coulson cautiously suggested, ah, how about cooperating with the Global Strategy Bureau and the Foundation to tide over the difficulties? What? Cooperate with the Global Strategy Bureau and the Foundation to tide over the difficulties together? How? When the words came to his lips, Nick Fury changed his words, this is a good idea. Thinking of this, Nick. Fury's eyes brightened. Now is obviously not the time to use the whole cards. If we can reach a cooperation with the Global Strategy Bureau and the Foundation to tide over this crisis together. The more he thought about it, the more he felt that it was feasible. Although S.H.I.E.L.D. was vigilant towards the Global Strategy Bureau and the Foundation, it was different now. No matter what, the Foundation is one of the departments of the Federation. At least for now, it is a law-abiding organization. The Foundation and S.H.I.E.L.D. can reach a consensus on law-abiding. Now facing the common enemy of chaos splitters, Nick. Fury believes that the other party can still reach a consensus. Thinking of this, Nick. Fury stopped hesitation and nodded to Phil Coulson. That's a good idea, then I'll leave it to you, Phil Coulson, to contact the Foundation. Pierce's eyes flickered at the side, and he wanted to interrupt several times, but Nick. Fury did it when he thought of it, and acted vigorously. In the end, Pierce seems to think that this chaotic situation is suitable for Hydra to fish in troubled waters. If a cooperation with the Foundation can be reached, it is also good news for Hydra. Hydra can also use this opportunity to find out the reality of some Foundations, and benefit from the plans of the Chaos Separatists. Thinking of this, Pierce echoed in agreement, the director is brilliant. At this time, Nick. Fury felt that it was not too late, so he immediately said to Phil Coulson, Phil Coulson, if possible, find a way to meet with the Foundation Commander Chen Feng, and discuss cooperation matters on behalf of S.H.I.E.L.D. It's not too late, you go as soon as possible. Thinking of this, Phil Coulson said helplessly, Sir, what about Natasha Romanoff? Didn't you ask me to bring reinforcements there? Nick. Fury waved his hand directly, directly let the people from the anomalous containment force go there first, let Natasha Romanoff command, your first task is to contact the Foundation first. Seeing that the boss said so, Phil Coulson nodded and agreed, no problem, I'll do it right away. After watching Phil Coulson leave, only Nick. Fury and Assistant Pierce were left in the office. Nick. Fury suddenly asked, Pierce, what do you think of this crisis? Pierce felt his heart skip a beat, and after a while he said without changing his face, I think this is a good opportunity. Oh, I would like to hear more about it. Isn't this crisis an opportunity for S.H.I.E.L.D. to grow? Pierce talked eloquently, whether it is S.H.I.E.L.D. or the Foundation, the Federation has not really fully delegated power to these powerful organizations, and checks and balances still exist. Only by making the Federation realize that in the face of these crises, we must rely on us, can we grow from it. Nick. Fury laughed. That's right, the Hound can only be useful in troubled times, otherwise the Federation would not realize our importance at all. This universe is too dangerous. If there is no way of shield, it will be a disaster for the Earth and human beings. Unless it is a last resort, the reserve force must not be used at the moment of survival of the race. It's time for the Avengers' plan. With winter approaching, who will turn the tide and have the last laugh? Villa Intelligence Officer, your certification has passed and you can pass. After the inspection, two guards on guard let her pass through the checkpoint of the headquarters. The Vera Intelligence Officer was guided down to the Commander-in-Chief's office, which symbolizes the Foundation's supreme power. After a while, an assistant female officer came out. You can go in, remember the meeting time is only 20 minutes. Vera nodded anxiously and said softly, Okay, I understand. Walking into the office, I saw Chen Feng who was looking down at the report, and Miss Tu Bi who was standing behind him as an adjutant and security officer. There is also a beautiful lady in a green chong sam in the office, sitting elegantly on the guest seat, holding a cup of black tea and sipping. Vera raised her head and shouted in a crisp voice, Report. Chen Feng put down the document in hand, looked up and down the person with majestic eyes, and then said in a deep voice, to make a long story short, Villa Intelligence Officer, report the information. Vera had to raise her voice, yes, sir. 
Then the female intelligence officer reported carefully in her crisp voice. We investigated Hell's Kitchen with Agent Natasha Romanoff of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Agent Sky, based on the investigation of the advance intelligence team. There we rescued the agent team of the Global Strategic Bureau, the MOLD team, which was besieged by unknown organizations. After contacting the MOLD team, I learned that not long ago, a betrayal, May 23rd, incident occurred in a research institute under the Black Watch, a secret military organization of the Federation. What he did was in contact with the National Strategic Bureau. But the Catherine team sent out by the Global Strategic Bureau is suspected to have been wiped out, and the entire team has never heard from it. In order to investigate the specific situation, the Global Strategy Bureau dispatched a mold team, but the rescue mission failed, and the target location has been cleaned up. Our country has obtained it. 17. After the intelligence team went to a branch of the Global Strategic Bureau located in the Redstone Fort military base, we discovered that the Redstone Fort military base was attacked by an unknown virus during the opening day. A large number of military personnel have been injured and sick. I suspect that they may have been attacked by the T-virus or similar viruses. I have conducted a careful analysis of the intelligence and determined that it is likely that the chaos separatists are preparing a large-scale offensive by using the virus obtained by researching containment 008. Hearing this, the corners of Chen Feng's mouth rose, and he glanced at her approvingly and said, Miss Vera, your job is very good, and the facts are almost as you guessed. The foundation recently discovered an infected banknote. It was a $100 bill, and it was infected with a large number of new viruses that were suspected to be variants of the T-virus. The base's intelligence officer analyzed that it was probably done by another branch of the chaos separatists, but what I didn't expect was that the military organization Black Watch was also linked to the chaos separatists. I have concluded that the military organization Black Watch has been controlled by the Council of the Twelve Round Tables. Having said that, Chen Feng laughed as if he had already guessed something. If I'm not mistaken, the Council of the Twelve Round Tables wants to create a biohazard that sweeps the entire Federation through the branches of Blackwatch and Chaos Insurgents. Ophelia, who was listening with gusto, put down the ceramic teacup, raised her feet, and her eyes fluttered. Then, Commander, do you think they want to subvert the White Eagle Federation government through this? No. On the contrary, I think they want to use 008 to create a biohazard to control the entire Federation, and then control the Federation to achieve the goal of controlling human civilization. Ophelia changed her sitting position when she heard the words, so what is the commander going to do? I don't think they have the ability to control the virus made with the 008 substrain in the containment. Especially through the stupid way of spreading the virus, although they can indeed use this to obtain special authorization to forcibly take over any infected areas. Speaking of this, Ophelia was in high spirits, as if she saw the next doomsday crisis that would determine the control of the Union. But they ignore that once the infection gets out of control, they will get nothing but a piece of wasteland, but how does your Lord Commander plan to solve this crisis? This biochemical crisis is doomed to erupt. It is an opportunity for them, so why not an opportunity for us? Chen Feng's eyes deepened, and his eyes were firm. Don't forget, the original intention of the establishment of the Global Strategy Bureau. The Global Strategic Bureau was established to fight against a biochemical crisis that may sweep the entire Federation, or even the world, and even conducted a large-scale exercise across the Federation for this purpose. This is the top secret of the Global Strategic Bureau, and no one knows about it except the previous directors. Once a crisis breaks out, I can logically wake up the sleeping phoenix of the Global Strategic Bureau. Both Vera and Ophelia, the top secret intelligence officer, were stunned to hear this. They never thought that the Global Strategic Bureau was created for this purpose, to resist a biochemical crisis that might sweep the entire Federation, or even the world, and create a huge Global Strategic Bureau for this. It turns out that this is the foundation, even if it is to contain a 008 that is out of control, it is willing to pay an incalculable amount of manpower and material resources, even decades of investment. When Chen Feng saw the top secret of the Global Strategic Bureau through the system, he couldn't help being shocked, as expected of someone from the Foundation. In times of peace, the agents of the whole territory are ordinary people living beside you and me. Once something happens, after activating Order Number 51, 
These agents of the whole territory will immediately become the most elite fighters. They will work hard to ensure the maintenance of the cities, order, and save human civilization from fire and water. Even someone who knows the Foundation better, even the intelligence officer of the Foundation, Vera, is shocked that the Foundation is still hiding such a plan. The Foundation, worthy of the light of human reason, who would devote decades to a illusory thing. The agents of the Global Strategy Bureau have always been unknown, dedicated to their duties, and loyal to human beings. In a few decades, how many agents are getting old? How many generations have been changed? Even on the day when they are not drafted for the rest of their lives, they will fight for all the good things in the world. Only the Foundation can cultivate such a group of people in this self-interested federation, a group of eternally loyal watchmen, watching over the peace of all mankind. If it was just this evil federation, maybe it still existed in the past, but it is absolutely impossible to produce a group of such idealists now. Just by seeing this crisis, one can imagine how vicious the Chaos Separatist branch and the Council of the Twelve Round Tables are. They actually got the virus on USD. The more modern the human civilization system becomes, the more complex it becomes. Banknotes have not been completely abandoned until today, and they are one of the most widely circulated means. The virus infected the banknotes. It is conceivable that this is almost the most fatal blow to the White Eagle Federation. Just imagine, hot money suddenly turned into a horrible demon that wants your life. Banknotes are not only widely circulated, but also circulated very quickly, which can easily create a large number of sources of infection. What's even more frightening is that the virus they use seems to have an incubation period. After Chen Feng got the sample, he quickly sent it to Dr. Wilhelm for research, and Dr. Wilhelm came to the conclusion after the research. This zombie virus similar to T-virus has an incubation period of at least two to three days. Due to the existence of the incubation period, this is more conducive to the spread of the zombie virus. After all, it does not mutate into a zombie immediately. With an incubation period of two to three days, banknotes might even be circulated from the White Eagle Federation to all parts of the world. From this point, it can be seen that the Twelve Round Table Council has a great appetite and is insane. Even knowing that this may cause tens of millions of deaths and injuries, or even cause a large-scale loss of control, the entire Terra Blue Star may have to be sent. Chen Feng couldn't help thinking about a parallel branch world of the American comics World Zero. Zombies Marvel World, in that world, a vote of superheroes, and even those mutants are all infected and turned into zombies. Even these zombified superheroes ran to the universe in pursuit of flesh and blood. Thinking of this scene, Chen Feng's scalp is a little numb. If he doesn't care about it, maybe this world will develop into a situation like that of the American comics universe. And at the moment he has also received the task of the system. Ding, a special doomsday task has been triggered to contain the out-of-control containment 008 zombie virus substrain. Because the host triggers a special doomsday task for the first time, the foundation will send reinforcements. A total of 200 dolls from the Yoroha troops are on standby. Mobile Task Force Nine-Tailed Fox, Combined Students. Respected Commander, please save the human world and avoid entering the world line of the zombie American comics universe. Didn't expect there to be systematic reinforcements. Chen Feng, who already had the confidence and strength to control Resident Evil, now has even more confidence at the moment. At the moment both Vera and Ophelia have recovered from the shock. Thinking of the Foundation's decades-long watch for a rainy day, and then thinking of the extremely complicated situation now. Vera said with some concern, Commander, although the Foundation has made sufficient preparations for this, the unknown virus of widowhood may have spread to the Emperor's area during this period of time. Even if we put in the vaccine serum now, it may not be able to control the situation. Once they mutate, the consequences will be unimaginable, and even the entire human race may suffer catastrophe. The Council of the Twelve Round Tables is simply a group of lunatics, an existence that is absolutely uncontrollable by human power. If the situation is out of control, do we need to make preparations to preserve the human fire? Hearing Vera's worry, Chen Feng waved his hands and said lightly, It won't be the end, don't worry, it doesn't matter even if the end is, I will take action. Then Chen Feng issued new instructions and said, 
Miss Vera, the intelligence officer, now you set off on the transport plane immediately. I have arranged for personnel to load a batch of serum vaccines, and you will lead an advance team to bring the serum and supplies to the Redstone Fort military base. Subsequently, there will be several batches of transport crews delivering the serum vaccines to the agencies of the Strategic Bureau across the territory. The Mobile Task Force Hell Paratroopers, as well as Hammerfall, and the Nine-Tailed Fox Mobile Task Force dispatched by the Foundation Headquarters have all entered a 24-hour Battle 1.1 standby state. Then he looked at Ophelia again, and issued orders with a calm demeanor, Mrs. Ophelia, you can start contacting your people. You will have a batch of new equipment and new support. It's also time to try the power of the T-103X Tyrant transformed by the Blood Orchid. Aren't the Council of the Twelve Round Tables and the Chaos Separatists going to fight a propaganda war with us? Speaking of this, Chen Feng had a mocking smile on his face. Presenting the Foundation as a villain who controls the world behind the scenes makes the public wary of the Global Strategy Bureau and the Foundation. 11. They think they can fool everyone and run the world. 11. But it's time to show them the power of the Foundation. Mrs. Ophelia, I will launch a propaganda offensive to counterattack in 8 hours, and at the same time use the power of the Supreme Commander of the Foundation to send a request to the President of the Federation to sign Order 51. 17. At that time, you can let go of your hands and feet and do a big job. Hearing Chen Feng's plan, Ophelia's eyes sparkled, as if she couldn't wait. Ophelia said confidently, Then, please use me and the Chaos Splitter to your heart's content, I will definitely control them and let the Chaos Splitter return to their original mission. After finishing speaking, Chen Feng raised his hand and glanced at the military watch on his hand and said, Then, it is 2300 on the 11th and in eight hours, the Foundation will appear in front of the world. Completely expel this doomsday from our world. On Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C., in front of the huge square where the Washington Monument stands, the bustle of the past has long since disappeared, and tourists and citizens have disappeared. The cordon was pulled up, and armed police and armed security guards were everywhere. Barricades and military armored vehicles turned the heart of the Federation into a citadel of iron barrel defense. Accompanied by the gloomy sky, light rain fell, and soon turned into a downpour. The federal flag hanging in front of the monument no longer fluttered in the rain. This is FCN Morning News, I'm the host Hannah, and I'm broadcasting today's newsletter for you. Since the Black Thursday incident, more than eight states including Kentucky, New Jersey, Colorado, and New York have successively experienced large-scale infections. This flu epidemic has swept across the Commonwealth. According to the research of the medical team of Imperial State University of Science and Technology, it is found that the virus will attack the human nerve center, making the patient prone to enter a state of extreme rage and attack all human beings around him. Yesterday, serious demonstrations and riots occurred in Luasheng, Manhattan, Vegas, New Chicago and other areas. Supermarkets in a large number of cities fell into a shortage of supplies, and the logistics of the entire federal government was temporarily interrupted. The following cities, 24 cities including Luo Shengdu, New York, Raccoon City, and New Chicago, have declared a state of emergency and comprehensive martial law. The federal speaker will deliver a major national speech in one hour. The Coast Guard has tightly controlled the east and west coasts of the Commonwealth, and the Department of Transportation has indicated that planes, trains, and shipping within the Commonwealth will be temporarily suspended. I'm the host, Hannah, and I'll give you a detailed report below. May God bless the Commonwealth. The TV was turned off, and the federal speaker, Adam Benford put down the remote control in his hand with a deep frown, and looked at the senior federal officials in front of him expressionlessly. Oh nine. Your Excellency the Chief Speaker knocked on the 200-year-old oak desk in front of him, and scanned the area below with burning eyes. The gray-haired chairman Adam Benford said in a deep voice, Gentlemen, the Federation has reached the most critical moment, but those who have been talking about it all the time, whether it is the military, the health department, or the intelligence department, all members of the parliament gentlemen, at the moment there is nothing you can do. The group of well-dressed gentlemen were speechless when they were questioned, and they all looked at their noses and noses, and their noses watched their hearts, and they didn't answer. The dull meeting was going on, when a secretary at the moment came over cautiously from the side, and whispered in his ear, 
Your Excellency the Speaker, the four-star general, General Sheffield has just arrived by military plane. General Sheffield. He's not at the hexagon, what's he doing here? Adam Benford pondered for a moment and ordered to the secretary, let him in. After a while, I saw a typical red-necked old general with gray hair but tall and straight figure, walked in accompanied by two high-ranking officers. As soon as they met, Sheffield said straight to the point, Mr. President, Federation One has reached the most critical moment. Now there should be no more hesitation. We have to strike hard. It's time to sign order no. 51. Hearing this, Adam Benford frowned, hesitation, but Black Watch and the Marine Corps said they can control the situation. Hearing this, General Sheffield sneered dismissively, if the situation can be controlled, the current consequences will not be caused. If the spread of infection is not controlled, the Federation will become an international orphan and be isolated by the whole world. Once the Federation loses the global what kind of consequences will the supply chain cause, I don't think your excellency the speaker wants to see it. After all, as one of the four-star generals with real power, General Sheffield handed over a document in front of Adam Benford. No more hesitation, sir. After finishing speaking, he leaned closer to Adam Benford, and added in a low voice, the Global Strategic Bureau has told me that they will be able to control the situation within three days, including the Stark Group and other companies, have already decided to support the National Strategic Bureau. Okay, you convinced me, bring the documents. Adam Benford quickly took over the document, signed his name, and immediately affixed the official seal of the chief speaker. You will not regret this decision. His Excellency Chen Feng of the Foundation has already stated that the Foundation will fully intervene. Mr. President, you can rest easy. Adam Benford sighed, I hope so. What Mr. Chief Speaker Adam Benford didn't know was that just yesterday, Chen Feng had already met with the military giant in front of him through Tony Stark. The most valuable thing about Tony Stark is naturally his technological talent, but the value of his Stark group and the huge network of contacts left to him by Howard Stark can be compared with it. After all, the world is not only about fighting and killing, but also about people's understanding of the world. If it weren't for Tony's connections, he wouldn't be the leader of Avengers. As the leader of the Federation's top military industrial enterprises for so many years, Stark Group is an indispensable member of its military industrial complex. It can be said that the General Speaker of the Federation is only the General Speaker for eight years, but whoever controls the Stark Group can be said to be the underground emperor of the Federation for a lifetime. Without the help of the Stark Group, Chen Feng would still have some trouble finding General Sheffield. However, after lobbying by the Foundation, Sheffield naturally chose to side with the Foundation from the bottom of his heart. Tony is willing to transfer the technology of the military's MKI Mecca to Colonel James Rhodes, and from then on, the Foundation and the Global Strategy Bureau are willing to develop deeper support with the military. Definitely after a lot of lobbying, a special fund of US$500 dollars was added to Sheffield's private account and the National Strategy Bureau will invest a sum of US$100 billion United States dollars in bidding funds for major military enterprises. As a very principled General Sheffield, he first rejected these requests with positive words, but considering that US$500 dollars was used to support veterans, and the tender of US$100 dollars, in the end the Stark Group and the Foundation will it will jointly fund and establish a new military industrial enterprise in a joint venture with the federal military. In addition, two retired generals from the Federal Military Special Operations Command will serve as military advisors to a military defense company established under the Foundation. For a patriot like him, the benefits outweigh the risks regardless of public or private interests. In the end, General Sheffield, who was moved by the patriotic behavior of the Foundation and the Stark Group, was very considerate of his feelings and reason. I agreed to their request and accepted the gift of cooperation reasonably. Just after Federal Speaker Adam Benford signed Order No. 51, Adam Benford and General Sheffield shook hands in a friendly manner, and then the document was quickly passed through the Federal Capitol Hill for execution. Five minutes later, a special car arrived at the headquarters of the National Strategic Bureau in Washington. Two high-level agents from the Global Strategic Bureau hurried to the general headquarters of the Global Strategic Bureau. Order number 51 is officially issued.
Immediately issue activation instructions to all terminals in the Federation through the SHD host. Authorization code I-851, CQ-633, QL-320, authorization code green, authorization start. In normal times, the National Strategic Bureau will only maintain a minimum operating existence, including the director of the National Strategic Bureau is also in a vacant state. However, once activated, Chen Feng, who has the highest authority of the Global Strategic Bureau, will automatically take over the post of director of the Global Strategic Bureau. At the headquarters of the foundation, Chen Feng suddenly raised his right hand. On his right hand, the light of the watch lit up, and a code numbered 001 was extremely dazzling. At the moment, Shi Feng's voice that has taken over the entire foundation network suddenly sounded, Commander, a special set of signals has been detected, and I seem to be able to activate the ICE system that takes over the Global Strategic Bureau through your wristwatch. Do you need to activate? Chen Feng affirmatively demanded, sure to activate. Okay, wait a minute, I will use my subroutine to take over the OSD system, and my subroutine will become the ICE system of the OSD. Immediately afterwards, an emotionless Shifeng's voice sounded, the central system of the Global Strategic Bureau has been activated, and it has been detected that the commander, your identity code is S01. According to order number 51, you will be coded as Global Agent S01, and will automatically take over the entire Territory Strategic Bureau, become the current director of the National Strategic Bureau. Welcome back, Chief. Following the sound of the subroutine Shui Feng, a huge amounts of stereoscopic holographic projection screen appeared in front of Chen Feng's eyes, which was a map that included the entire territory of the Federation. According to the agreement, the Federation has been in a state of blockade throughout the territory. Do you want to activate all agents in the territory of the Federation, Director? Chen Feng glanced at the authorization, smiled and pressed the fingerprint of his thumb on the watch and said, Activation Command. Authorization code I-851, CQ-633, QL-320. Received that the activation procedure is complete, order number 51 has officially come into effect, and the authorization has been officially launched through the Nirvana plan. Wake up procedure started. All sleepers will be awakened. After the Shifeng subprogram that took over the mainframe of the Global Strategy Bureau passed the activation code, an orange light that symbolized the nirvana of the phoenix lit up. Immediately in front of the giant screen of the headquarters of the Global Strategic Bureau, an orange light like a flame lit up on the dull watches of one Global Strategic Bureau agent after another. At the moment on the huge amounts of stereoscopic holographic projection screen in front of Chen Feng, a tiny spot of light lit up followed by the second, the third, ten, hundreds, tens of thousands. Like a single spark starting a prairie fire, after the countless sparks on the screen are constructed, countless light spots are formed on the holographic map of the Federation to form a phoenix that symbolizes the rebirth of the Ten Song dynasty. A satisfied expression appeared on Chen Feng's face. At the moment, Ophelia and her adjutant Leah just came over to say goodbye and just witnessed the whole process. Now, Ophelia finally understood why the Global Strategic Bureau has always allowed the Chaos Splitters to expand and dominate as if they didn't exist. Because the Global Strategy Bureau has been dormant, and if these dormant people are not awakened, if these 340 Ashen Phoenixes do not Nirvana, no one will know his existence at all. It just regards the Global Strategic Bureau as an organization about the same level as Fobol. Although Ophelia had already known such a secret before, she was already prepared, but when she actually saw the dormant agents all over the entire Federation, Ophelia was greatly shocked. So many agents, what an exaggeration and what a huge effort. Ophelia and her junior lieutenant now know why the original leader of the Chaos Insurgency kept telling them that the division is an organization comparable to the Chaos Insurgency. But since the original leader of the Chaos Splitter who traveled through the world passed away, they no longer take it seriously, just as a dispensable legend. Even Ophelia, a long-lived person, has never seen the existence of a real global strategy. But today, she saw how terrifying the Global Strategic Bureau really is. Looking at the unpredictable Chen Feng in front of them, Ophelia and the little adjutant now only feel that the other's image has been elevated to an unimaginable level. 
It's just a whole land strategic bureau, and it's just a part of the grand layout, and this part is a peak that climbs to the sky. But thinking of this, Mrs. Ophelia's next reaction was overjoyed. As long as she is the commander's closest partner, the stronger the foundation, the farther she can lead the chaos splitters. You can even touch those existences that you can't touch at all. Thinking of this, Ophelia wished she could stay by Chen Feng's side for a few more months before leaving. But thinking of the master's mission, she still had to give Chen Feng a watery look, and then reported softly, Master Commander, we are ready and ready to go. Chen Feng raised his head and glanced at this troublesome goblin, now he has no time to listen to his wife play the piano. He took out a Romani Conti from the wine cabinet on the side, poured three glasses, raised the glass and said, I wish you a successful start, the foundation will take full action next. Mrs. Ophelia drank the red wine, and hugged Chen Feng tightly with her blushing cheeks whispering, Then, Commander, you can wait for my good news. After bidding farewell to Ophelia, Chen Feng took out his changed foundation service gun, played with it casually for a while, and said in a low voice, It's time for us to do it. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support my channel.